Hello everyone, Valiath here, and welcome to my Holy Paladin Raid Healing Guide. In this guide, we will be discussing every aspect of how you can succeed as a Holy Paladin in a raid environment, starting off with our stat priorities. Secondly, we'll go over our general raid healing tips and tricks, talent builds and their playstyles, and lastly, add-ons and weak auras. Our stat priority is quite different than from M+, but one thing remains constant, and that is that crit is still the number one priority to reach soft cap with. This remains at 40% and can be reached with having a base crit of 34% and then using a file of corrupting rage to reach 40. There are multiple ways you can get there though, and don't forget to use buzzing rune which helps out a lot. Raid healing has limited to no emphasis on doing damage at all. If healer damage is what makes or breaks your team's ability to kill bosses, then your DPS needs to do a bit better. You are there to keep people alive, and that's it. As such, our remaining three stats are arranged in such a way to boost our healing output as much as possible. Haste remains our second priority stat to reach soft cap with of 35%. Considering we now have very strong cast spells in our repertoire of healing, it makes sense that haste still has an important role, and reaching 35% haste cap as soon as possible is of utmost priority. Don't forget Howling Rune either, it adds a lot of haste if you need to reach soft cap. Mastery now becomes our third most important stat to pick up. Our mastery helps us do healing the closer the target is to you. Try to get as much mastery as you can after you reach soft cat for crit and haste. If you're able to hit soft cat for crit and haste without using any weapon runes, pick up hissing rune to add more mastery. Lastly is versatility, which is by no means a bad stat. It's just that crit, haste and mastery scale much better with our spells for this type of content. So how do we as holy paladins ready ourselves to help heal a very large group of players during some of the hardest boss encounters in the game? Well, it all starts out with our talent build. Well, actually, in reality, it should start with you as a player educating yourself on the boss encounters so you know what to expect. I'm working on a healing guide for all the bosses in Amir Dracil, which should come out in a little while, but there's a plethora of written and video guides out there that explain boss mechanics, so go check them out. There are two builds out there that currently appear to be in use, both of which have their own advantages and disadvantages. We have our familiar Awakening build that we used last season. This is still very much viable for most content, but I believe it will fall behind once you get into Mythic Raiding. And secondly, we have the Caster build, which fully dives into the new Caster playstyle and is numerically the superior build from a healing throughput point of view. Both of the builds presented here are viable and good for raiding. However, if you plan on doing Mythic Raiding, then the Caster build is probably what you will need to be running considering the healing checks at that difficulty. If you're not doing Mythic Raiding, then any of the two can be used successfully you should pick the one that you like the best and you can perform to the best of your ability. But before we dive into each build, let's talk about some basics that apply to both of them. The number one thing you want to do is make sure you have all 8 of your glimmers out on people as much as you can. This will help you with AoE healing, but also help you trigger your 2 piece set bonus every time you refresh a glimmer or it expires. It is important that you have glimmers on both ranged and melee players due to your 2 piece set bonus. You want to make sure that you can cover as many people in your raid as possible with the reverberation our set bonus provides us. We also need to make sure we put both of our beacons on targets that will get the most out of the healing it provides. If you're in a pug, it's hard for you to know which player will take more damage, so generally, look for the one with the lowest item level first, and then what class they play. This means that if you run the Awakening build, which makes you stand in melee more often, melee players will get more healing from you just because you are closer to them. Because of this, it's not a bad idea to try to have one beacon on a melee player. That will increase your healing done to them thanks to your mastery and the playstyle of the Awakening build. Enhancement Shamans are great targets for your beacon, as they have very little personal defensives. I also find that plate wearing DPS tends to stand more in bad than other melee. In general though, just make sure that the squishiest people have your beacon on them and you should be fine. I use a macro that allows me to put Beacon of Light and then Beacon of Faith by holding down Shift. This is helpful as it only takes one action bar slot. You can find this macro in the description of the video. Barrier of Faith is a very strong shield effect that you should use on CD. Who to use it on depends, but in general you can use it on tanks when the boss does his tank buster, which will help prevent a large amount of predictable incoming damage. I use a mouse over macro for this as well, which you'll find in the description of this video. Let's first discuss the caster build, as it provides us with the most changes to our historical playstyle, which will for some be the most interesting build to learn about. There is not that much variance between the two builds, but the choices of certain talents in the caster build changes our playstyle quite a bit. 
Right off the bat, this is the highest potential healing output build out there. It is not as intuitive to how our playstyle has been historically, but numerically, this will slap when it comes to healing throughput. On top of that, it is also much more mana forgiving since we'll be spending all of our infusion of light procs on Flash of Light, which costs 70% less mana when used with that proc. But what we will be giving up for all this healing throughput is our damage, which will be very low. This spell relies on you as a player to manage your Blessing of Dawn triggers as well as using your infusion of light procs on Flash of Light for healing. I will be discussing how Blessing of Dawn works here in a little bit. The first four rows in our holy tree are identical for both builds, but the first difference comes in row 5. Some people like to pick up either Unwavering Spirit or Protection of Tear to buff our Aura Mastery. This is a great option, but considering the playstyle of this build, I'm opting to put the point into Breaking Dawn instead. I'm doing this as with Blessing of Dawn stacks, Light of Dawn can push out a lot of healing when needed, and reaching those ranged players more consistently is beneficial. In row 5, we pick up Hand of Divinity, as we will be running the Tears Deliverance and Boundless Salvation Talents. We should in general use tears on CD and then immediately after hit Hand of Divinity and push out both of those instant holy lights on targets with the hot to extend its duration. Allies with this hot also receive 15% extra healing from Flash of Light, Holy Light and Holy Shock. Keep in mind, those two holy lights will count towards our Blessing of Dawn as well as Holy Light generates holy power in this build. The next choice we are faced with is in row 6 between Light's Hammer and Holy Prism. In my opinion, Holy Prism will technically be a bit more healing considering it's low CD and relatively strong heal, but Light's Hammer is still an acceptable choice if you find that you play with that better. Row 7 is where we see most changes compared to last season. We pick up Divine Revelations in order to boost our Flash of Light, but also make our Holy Light return half a percent of our maximum mana when cast. This is a great mana generation choice, and you should be casting Holy Light if you need to top yourself off a bit. We also pick up Tower of Radiance here, making our Flash of Light and Holy Light give us Holy Power. This does help us gain Blessing of Dawn stacks quickly, in order to pump out those boosted Word of Glories or Light of Dawns. In row 9, there's also the choice between Blessing of Summer and Merciful Auras. Blessing of Summer is one of our main DPS contributions to the raid, but the seasons it cycles through have really powerful effects for us as well. Summer provides an ally a 40% chance to deal 20% additional damage as Holy. Note that it says player, meaning this does not apply to any pets a player might be using. As such, use this on high DPS players that are not pet classes. I like to put mine on mages or rogues. I also put a weak ore in the description that will help manage this a little bit. After summer comes autumn, which provides the player a 30% CD reduction for 30 seconds. This is very powerful, and in raid I generally put it on mages, windwalker monks, evokers, or warlocks. They do very well with CD reduction and can make great use of it. Next up is Blessing of Winter, which allows a target healer to restore 1% mana every 2 seconds for 30 seconds. This is very strong in raid. Getting 15% of your mana back over 30 seconds is huge. Generally, I put it on myself, but if you notice your other healers are struggling a little bit, it's fine to put it on them as well. Lastly is Blessing of Spring, which blesses an ally increasing their healing done by 15% and healing received for 30%. This can be put on yourself, or you can put this on a player you know will be taking a lot of damage and you want to boost their healing received. I use a mouse over macro for this talent. I will put it in the description below. Merciful Auras did get a nerf going into this season, rendering it much weaker than it was in Season 2. Which is why I believe most players will opt for Blessing of Summer instead. If you want one less button to worry about, go Merciful Auras. But if you want more control of what you do, to whom you do it, and when, pick up Blessing of Summer. And last but not least, we will be picking up Inflorescence of the Sunwell instead of Awakening. This talent gives your Infusion of Light an extra charge, soups up your Greater Judgment by 50%, but more importantly, also reduces the mana cost of Flash of Light by 30% and generates more Holy Power. In this build, you will have limited Holy Power generation, as you will never, and I do mean never, use Crusader Strike or Hammer of Wrath, and you will only very rarely use your Judgment. You would only ever use Judgment if you do not have a Holy Shock available, no Infusion of Light proc, and no Dawn stacks to use Light of Dawn or Word of Glory on. Your Holy Power Generator in this build is Holy Shock, and thanks to Tower Radiance, Flash of Light and Holy Light. That means that our Holy Power Spenders, Light of Dawn and Word of Glory, are very low on our priority list. You would only ever use these spells when you have a minimum 1 stack of Blessing of Dawn to boost this output to make them worth casting. Preferably, you'd want to have two stacks of Blessing of Dawn. 
casting them without a Blessing of Dawn stack is a throughput decrease as a single Flash of Light, Hold of Light or Hold of Shark does more healing than a non-Dawn boosted Word of Glory or Light of Dawn. Because of this, we have removed many of the talents that boost your Holy Spender abilities and instead put them into talents to buff your Flash of Light, Holy Light and Holy Shark. I'm going to pause here for a moment and underscore the importance of making sure you understand this playstyle. If you choose to run this build, you will need to adhere to the above priorities or you will be doing significantly less healing than the other build we will be discussing. However, if you do this right, you'll be at the top of the meters in an instant. Let's talk about Blessing of Dawn and how to manage it. I highly highly recommend that you either create a weak aura to track this or pick one up that's already made. I myself am not very good at weak auras, but I did create one that shows when you have the buff, its remaining duration, and the stack count. If anyone knows how to make one that also shows how many more casts of holy power generators is left to trigger a stack, please let me know. So what does it do and how do I get it? Well Blessing of Dawn makes your next holy power spender do 20% more healing and this affects stacks. Firstly, you need to be talented into Of Dusk and Dawn which states that after you have cast three Holy Power Genning abilities, you gain Blessing of Dawn. This talent can be found in the Class Talent Tree. During your Daybreak Ramp, you can very quickly get stacks of Blessing of Dawn, so remember to unleash a Fat Light of Dawn when that happens for AoE healing, or fully top someone off with a large Word of Glory. Daybreak is a fantastic ability, but the sheer speed you can push out Holy Shocks and generate Holy Power is very fast. This means you might find yourself overcapping on Holy Power, which is okay to do if you ultimately use the spender in an efficient way. Keep this in mind when you know there's a substantial amount of damage going out, and you can line up your Divine Toll and Daybreak combo as well as your Blessing of Dawn triggers. If you can land that perfectly, you can unleash an insane amount of healing to your raid in very little time. For example, try prepping this on Smolderon when he goes into the center. Immediately gather your fire orbs, and once the group takes their first tick of pulsating damage, hit Daybreak to consume your glimmers to do AoE healing. This will get you your 25% haste boost from your force set, and it will also trigger the rising sunlight town for those extra holy shocks. Then hit Divine Toll to do further AoE healing, as well as apply new glimmers to the targets. Now start pushing out those holy shocks on rising sunlight to trigger your two-piece set bonus, which will push out a lot of AoE healing but it will also very quickly get you 1-2 to two stacks of Blessing of Dawn. Lastly, push Light of Dawn, as everyone will be stacked up and you will see stupid amounts of healing numbers go flying. This entire sequence of events takes about 10 seconds or so to do, and each and every step along the way does a lot of AoE healing to the group, which is taking pulsating damage the entire time Small Dawn is in the middle. The second build we will discuss is the Awakening build. Between the two builds, there are only a few changes, and that is that we do not pick up Tower Radiance and instead put that point into Protection or Tear, and instead of Inflorescence of the Sunwell, we pick up Awakening. Awakening puts a great deal of importance on Holy Power Spenders, which is the direct opposite of the Caster build. The other talent choices are almost all the same, but the playstyle is what differs thanks to this choice. We will be focusing on building Holy Power via all of our generators like Holy Shock, Crusader Strike, Hammer Wrath and Judgment, and then we will make sure to use that Holy Power on Word of Glory and Light of Dawn while still managing our Blessing of Dawn stacks. Once you hit 12 stacks of Awakening, you want to hit Judgment so you can activate Avenging Wrath to boost all your healing and Holy Power generation. When this is active, it is even more important that you track your Blessing of Dawn stacks so you can make sure you utilize its benefits properly. Practically everything you do when you have wings generate holy power, which will quickly rack up dawn stacks. Once again, Daybreak and Rising Sunlight have very strong synergy with the Awakening talent, as all those extra holy shocks count towards your Awakening stacks. If you are able to trigger wings via Awakening before you do your Daybreak ramp or combo, then you will very quickly get back up to those 12 stacks once again, meaning you can almost chain your wings back to back if done right. The Awakening build is much more harkened to our historical playstyle, where you spend a lot of time doing damage via your Crusader Strike, Hammer Wrath and Judgment. Your healing will primarily come from Holy Shock and your Holy Power Spenders, but proper usage of Tears Deliverance, Divine Toll and Daybreak all factor into success with playing this spec. There are no differences here compared to the caster build regarding CD usage. Let's talk real quickly about some add-ons and weak auras that are beneficial for raiding. The number one add-on you need to have installed is either DBM or Bigwigs. Both of these add-ons do the same thing, just in different ways. They provide you as a player visual and auditory cues when certain things are about to happen on boss fights. This is very beneficial, so that you know what is about to happen and you can make decisions accordingly. Best practice though, is to read and watch about boss fights before you enter the raid. 
DBM is a bit more user friendly in that it provides you with a lot more prompts on what to do and when to do it. Beware though, those prompts may not always coincide with what your raid leader wants you to do. Bigwigs provides all the same information, but in a more customizable way and less intrusive than DBM. This is the one I like to use, as I don't want to have an add-on yelling at me what to do and when to do it, when I may not necessarily agree with what it's recommending. I have enough other add-ons in weak auras that provide me with auditory cues for certain things, I don't need another one. Whichever one you pick to use, make sure you spend some time customizing it to your liking. The last thing you want to have happen is that all of a sudden a big bar shows up in the middle of the screen and messes you up. The second add-on I would recommend is not one specifically, but more of a type of add-on. I recommend downloading and customizing raid frames specifically for healing. The one I use is Voodoo, but I know there are a multitude of ways to achieve the same thing via mouse over macros and LVUI, Healbot, and Click. Spend some time on this to make sure that you are comfortable with the layout and the information it provides you. Weak Auras is where it becomes more of a personal preference. There's an entire Weak Aura pack for the raid that I would recommend everyone to use, as they're very good and great for any player of any skill. I will put some Weak Auras and add-ons I think are good to have in the description of this video that you can try out. That is it for this Holy Paladin raid healing guide. If you like this content, please consider liking the video, drop a comment below, and more importantly, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.